Hi, and welcome to the 2017 Paper 1 Junior Higher Level Question 9. Okay, so um, Question 9 is going to part A here is about 10 C marks. Um, I suggest you solve how you um, pause the video, just give it a go. Okay, it's standard stuff um, from like say second year in school. And if you know you want me to send on the, the notes for this, the screen grabbed questions and the answers on the following page. Uh, please feel free to send me on an email at shanetroy at gmail.com. Now, this is an equation because it's an equal. You should be able to recognize that this is quadratic because it's the power of 2. The highest power is 2. Okay. Uh, linear is first order, power, highest power is 1. Okay. Second order is quadratic. The third order is cubic. And they basically, linear have one factor, quadratic will have two factors, and the cubic will have three. Okay. That's you will have to do at some stages in, in your junior or higher level. Now it says give your answers in the form of a plus or minus b, okay, which it should appear in that form at the end, uh, where a and b are natural numbers. That means they're positive whole numbers. Now you could try use the you know, the fast method. It's just hopefully make some sense. You open up two brackets and put it equal to zero. No point. It's not going to work because they're giving you this uh, hint here that it's the form you need to use. The a plus or minus b is basically you know, this, okay? So, we will go through the answer and work, work our way through it. That's the formula written out. Okay, we're given it in the maths tables. That's the quadratic I'm trying to solve. This is the general form of an equation of a line. So from that, I can read off, um, now, that should read a squared uh, plus bx plus c. I don't know why I messed up that. So you can read off that the a is the number in front of the x squared, which is 1. The b is the number in front of the uh, x, which is minus 2, and c is the number at the end, which is minus 4. So that's how I get the three uh, inputs to the quadratic formula, which is this yoke here. So I basically put them in in brackets. Okay, the minus 2 goes in here, so it's minus times minus 2, plus or minus the big square root of minus 2 squared, b squared minus 4ac, so minus 4, 1 times uh, minus 4. That's all over 2 times. Now, this minus times minus 2, and that's one of the reasons I suggest I'm putting things in brackets. You won't forget um, to change the sign. The minus here will always change the sign at the input. So minus by minus changes that to a plus. Now you can put this whole thing here, uh, the square root into the into the calculator. Go straight to your answer. I got square root twenty, and then the bottom is two times one is two. Now that's my answer, but it's not in the form of a plus or minus the square root of b. It's actually in the form of a plus or minus the square root of b all over. In this case, you could, you could say a. Okay, so we need to get rid of this 2, but divide it into both terms. And this is where the trick comes in. Uh, the, two, the 2 will divide in easy if you want. Okay, whereas the 2, you can't just have a square root of 20. And what you can do, square root of 20 divided by 2. Okay, I can, there's a root of power that says, I can bring this uh, 2 under the square root. But I need to do something to it, and that's square it first. So that when I apply the square root, it gets reverted back to what it was. Uh, one way to look at this is that everything in maths must be reversible. So that's 20 divided by 4, because 2 squared is 4. Now if I square root it, it will go back to where it originally was. So there's no, there actually, there's actually been no change. Those two numbers are exactly the same. They look different, but they are the same number. Now, 4 to 20 equals 5. So simplifying it further, I end up with a square root of 5. Okay, that's where this came from. Now, both A and, and B, this, which is the, the number that's been square rooted, are both positive whole numbers. So it's to satisfy this, this last little thing. You know, it's just by doing the question naturally and not just leaving it as a decimal at the end. You probably would have arrived at this point, like, anyway. Okay. Now, that's problem with quadratic number. is something you need to be able to do. Junior higher level, that's it. Okay. If you can't solve quadratics efficiently and effectively every time, it does not to be harsh, but passes your more appropriate level. Okay. Uh, now, part B here. Given that the square root of d squared, uh, sorry, square root of d all to be squared equals d, multiply out and simplify uh, this terminology here. This uh, c plus square plus square root of d all to be squared. And remember, what square means is so you're multiplying something by itself. Okay. So very simply, that's the same thing as and I'm going to try to write it. I'm going to straight the answer here. C plus square root D all to be squared is the same thing as C plus square root D times C plus square root D. So you're trying to make sure that the C multiplies by both terms. 
and the square d multiplies by both terms. If you can do that, whatever way you do it, uh, if you can achieve that, you've done what's required. Now, I'm using a kind of methodology here, where I write one bracket out twice, multiply the first term of the of the other bracket into into here, the second term of the first bracket into here. And they both look alike, so it's hard to say first and second bracket. Basically, by doing that, I'm kind of achieving this c by both things and square d by both things. That's what I'm doing here. And I'm doing this for one reason, it's less error prone. Now, if we go left to right, c by times c, like x times x is x squared, c times c is c squared. So that's that done. Now, c times square d, they're different terms. It's like 2 times 3, and just leaving it written as 2 times 3. Because we don't know what the numbers are. Okay, so c times square d, that's it there. The same thing here. Now, you could write this as square d times c, but 2 times 3 is the same thing as 3 times 2. So I'm going to write it like this, just to make things easier on the flip side. And the last thing is square d times square d. Basically, what you're saying here is square d times square d. And if you think about it, that's the same thing by itself. That's the square root d squared. Now, the square there will cancel the square root. Then you're going to cancel each other, and you're left with d on its own uh, in the next, in the next uh, layer. So I'm going to go left right again to simplify what I can. Uh, nothing changes the c squared. So one apple plus one apple is two apples. And then I've shown you where I've got this d by uh, by the square root, uh, by square root. No, that's my answer. Okay. Um, I don't see anything. Just to give, actually, just give you a hint here by giving you this. Well, that's the answer. Okay. So thanks very much on that one. Now part C here. Okay. So it's for the 10d part. These things are very tricky. It's very easy to forget what these different things mean, but the project math now and choose your higher level, you kind of need to know them. They, they ask them a lot, and I would be a bit surprised if they ask them every year from now on in some fashion. So it really would help you, especially, look, if you go on to Leaving Cert, um, higher level maths, you, you need to know these things. You might as well learn them now when, when it's useful, okay? I suppose to struggle in higher level maths and then ultimately go back to pass um, because you, you're just not uh, effectively being able to uh, understand the, the rotation. Takes time, I, I, I empathize with you, um, but it um, needs to be done, okay? So, part C here, the table below shows whether each of the given numbers is an element of the natural numbers, okay? That means positive or negative whole numbers, okay? Uh, not including zero. The integer z, which is a positive or negative whole numbers, okay, including zero. The rational numbers, okay, which are fractions. The irrational numbers, which are things like square root of 2, pi, okay? and complete the table by writing yes or no into each box. One row is already done for you. 16 is an element, is a natural number, it's a positive whole number. It's an integer, it's a positive or negative whole number. It can be expressed as a fraction, okay, um, 32 over 2 is 16. Um, it's not irrational, okay. Irrational numbers have, will repeat, um, so will not repeat and can and will have a decimal going on forever. Now, square root of 6, Okay, let's go to the answers here, we haven't done. It's not natural, okay, because square root of 6, if I use the calculator, um, now, let's see if I can get the calculator back up. Okay, if I did square root of 6, now it's a computer calculator, clear it, 6 square root, where are we? Okay, it's 2.44, okay, that's not natural, okay, it's not. that's not a whole number, okay. Is it an integer? No, because it's, it's not a positive or negative whole number. It's a, it's a decimal. It's a, uh, in between the numbers two and three. Now, is it a uh, irrational? Sorry, a rational number? Uh, no, I said here, yes, it is. Okay. Is it irrational? Um, no, no, I'm sorry. I'm on the wrong slide. Uh, it's not, it's, it can't be expressed as a fraction. I think there's something wrong there. How do you express that? It's, 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 the next decimal goes on forever. It doesn't actually stop there. It goes on. So it's a decimal that doesn't repeat because it's not, no, it's not like three by three, 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 whatever. Okay, it's um goes on forever as far as I can tell, and um that's the side of a rational number, so it is irrational. Okay. Now two over three, okay, is a natural no because it's not a positive whole number. Okay, it's a positive number but not whole number. Is an integer no because it's not a positive or negative whole number. It's it's, it's not a whole number. Is it uh, a fraction? Yes. And uh, does it repeat and go on forever? No. That would be the same thing as 0.6666. Even though it's going on, it's repeating. So it's not rational. 
Now, minus 4, is it a natural number? No, it's negative. Is an integer? Yes, because it's the whole number, but it's positive or negative. It's negative, so it's a, it can be called an integer. Is it can be expressed as a fraction? Yeah, minus uh, 12 over 3 is one example. Is it irrational? No, because it doesn't repeat and go on forever. Now, I hope that makes sense, okay? So, that should be the end of question 9. Okay, so thanks very much, and hope that I see you on question 10. Thank you.